get started on today's topic, let's begin with some trivia. The first thing we're going to look at is uh, point number one. There are more than 25,000 phytochemicals identified in fruits and vegetables with potential anti-cancer properties. That is true. Your mom was right. We should all be eating more vegetables. There are beneficial compounds in vegetables and fruits that help us fight cancer. Point number two, you don't have much control over your risk for cancer, especially if you think it runs in your family. Is that true or false? That is false. As we're going to learn today, your environment and lifestyle choices can help reroute your genetics. The third point, 90 to 95 percent of all cancers have their root cause from the environment and lifestyle choices. Yes, this is true. We have the power, and today we're going to teach you how to focus on prevention. What can we do to reduce our risk? Well, I'd like to remind you that you're in charge of your health. What you do at home has a huge impact on your overall health. If you look at this first pie chart here, 90 to 95 percent of what you do at home is what that can reduce your cancer risk. Only genetics only contributes 5 to 10 percent of your cancer risk. But we're really going to focus on pie chart C. What is it about my environment that can increase or decrease my cancer risk? The biggest one is your diet. You can reduce your cancer risk by 30 to 35 percent by choosing better foods to put in your body. And I'll elaborate on that as we go through different slides today. Smoking or not smoking is another risk factor for, di uh, for sorry, cancer. 20 to 30, 25 to 30 percent of your risk uh, is greater if you smoke. The green area talks about infections. And although we don't have a lot of control over infections that we get, our bodies get, we can control uh, how healthy we are and our ability to fight infection. Infection can damage tissues, which causes inflammation. And that gives a, a stage, inflammation sets the stage for most diseases, including cancer. Being overweight, accounts for 10 to 20 percent of your cancer risk. So eating less, moving more, I know is a simple concept. And as we go through the slides today, I'll hopefully give you some more pointers on helping you to lose weight or giving you some resources that will help you in that area. Excessive alcohol intake is something that also increases your risk of cancer. That can contribute 4 to 6 percent of an increased risk. And then that little pink part of the C pie chart the 10 to 15 percent, the other category, well, that would include being sedentary, so not getting a lot of exercise, sitting, having more of a sitting job, watching a lot of TV, a lot of stress in your diet, uh, in, your, in your life. Um, stress is something that's hard to control, but if you're burning the candle at both ends, that is something that can also contribute to your cancer risk. And then, of course, another thing that's included in this other category is chemical exposures and pesticides. And some of those things we can control, and some of them we can't. But then minimizing those would be the best, the best bet. Most of us already know this, but smoking increases your risk of cancer. And that would include cigarette smoking, e-cigarettes, and chewing tobacco. Smoking cigarettes contains at least 50 carcinogens, and not only are you exposing yourself to these harmful chemicals, but when you smoke cigarettes, you're exposing your loved ones and your pets to secondhand smoke, so you're also increasing their risk. Chewing tobacco increases your risk of oral and mouth cancers, and it's not really a nice habit. How does smoking increase your cancer risk? It alters some cell signaling pathways, so the cells don't communicate as well, and that just starts the problem. There's also a link between smoking, uh, chewing tobacco, and inflammation in the body, and they're finding more and more that disease starts with inflammation. So anything we can do to decrease inflammation is good. 
We also need to limit our alcohol intake. You can see that excessive alcohol increases your risk for certain cancers that are listed there in point number one. But what actually happens when, when you drink alcohol and it's broken down by the body, it produces these dangerous compounds called free radicals and they damage our cells and delicate tissues. Alcohol also provides a lot of empty calories. And what I mean by empty calories is they're just calories. It's kind of like soda. They're not any nutrients in there that we need. And if we're taking a lot of extra calories that we don't need, we're not going to be at a healthy weight. And remember at the previous slide, it talked about being overweight as a risk for cancer. So that's one way we can also cut back on our calories. How can we defend our body against nutrition? My little picture up here, you know, your, body, your lifestyle is hurling arrows at your body, you know, with chemical exposure, stress, uh, not getting enough sleep, eating not very nutritious diet. Uh, so it's always having to deal with these defense, defenses, uh, defend against them. So by eating healthy foods, you can put up a shield to defend your body against some of the assault. The standard American diet is often abbreviated SAD because it is pretty sad. If you look at the left side slide here, this is what you see typically. I see a lot of kids eating this and it makes me sad. Highly processed, low fiber fried foods. They're pretty much brown. When you look at the right side here, a lot of the uh, beneficial chemicals in fruits and vegetables are the ones that give them the nice, deep, rich colors. So those are all those beneficial compounds that you can actually see. I mean, they're even pleasing to look at. I mean, this plate looks much more appetizing than this one. And these are the foods we want to focus on, fresh, whole foods, half plate of colorful vegetables. So we want to give our bodies these type of things so it can have this shield to defend ourselves from um, cancer and other illnesses. And this would include everyone in our family, even our children, you know, grandkids. Uh, these are not fun foods. They're kids type foods that they should be raised on either. We should all be learning to, to choose these. And I think most of us know that the plate on the right here is the healthier choice. Why is it then that we gravitate to these foods? I think part of it is we just don't make time to take care of ourselves. But we really need to stop making excuses. I've often heard it said that knowledge is power, but it really is only powerful if you use it and adapt it. You've probably heard it said that we should eat a minimum of five servings of fruits or veg and vegetables per day. And it's true. Each one of these boxes gives an example of what five fruits, servings of fruits and vegetables look like. Think about what you eat at home. Are you including something similar to this? Most of the people I meet as a dietitian, sadly are not. They're following the standard American diet and um, our bodies are telling us it isn't working. They're breaking down. They're not getting the nutrients that they need. So maybe that's something that you can work on. Remember that these are the chemicals that help fight disease and cancer specifically. So it's very worthwhile to try and incorporate more and more of these foods in our diet. I just wanted to take a minute to show you what the standard American diet looks like. Where are the calories in the standard American diet coming from? This pie chart shows us that 55%, that big blue area, is coming from processed food. I've put some pictures around of what processed food looks like. Donuts, Jimmy Dean breakfast sandwiches, uh, fried chicken, cold cuts, juices, sodas. Over here we have fast food on the left side. Uh, anything that comes in a box, bag, instant oatmeal, instant potatoes. We want it quick, we want it in a hurry, and it's hurting our bodies. We really are not getting the nutrients we need and we're getting tons of calories. 30% of our diet is coming from animal products. So that would mean meats, cheese, eggs. Only 15% 
the green and the yellow area are coming from the beneficial foods that we need most. And it's really a sad state. We keep saying sad because it's sad. <laughs> so these small section is where our vegetables, fruits, nuts, and beans, and whole grains are coming from. So this is why our cancer risk is greater. Good news is we have the power to change it. Processed meats and barbecue meats have also been implicated in increased cancer risk. Nitrates and nitrites are chemicals used to preserve processed meats. And if you don't know what processed meats are, I've pictured some there, but pepperoni, sausage, hot dogs, lunch meat, uh, beef jerky. These are things that we need to eat less of. And think of children. You know, I see a lot of children eating a lot of processed meat sandwiches, hot dogs, and that's a main staple of their diet. And they're growing. You know, they're also getting assaulted with all these chemicals that aren't good for them. Barbecued and smoked meats, there are certain chemicals that are formed when muscle meat is cooked at high temperatures. And these are the same chemicals that can be found in smoke, cigarette smoke and car exhaust. So, you know, it's not that we can never eat these things, but if you're eating these things on a regular basis, plus not eating fruits and vegetables that are going to give you that shield of defense, you're at greater risk. How much is too much? They've shown that one and a quarter hot dogs a day, or having just a lunch meat sandwich every day, or two to three slices of bacon every morning with your breakfast is going to really increase your risk. All those chemicals and nitrates and nitrites are what's doing it, and specifically it's, it influences colorectal cancers. There's a way you can make it a little bit better. You can buy uncured or nitrate, nitrate-free um, processed meats. They're still be high in sodium, but it is somewhat better choice. All right, so much with the negativity, huh? What should we be eating? Most of us know, but I'm going to tell you again. Whole foods, foods that resemble how we find them in nature. Unfortunately, we've gotten so busy with life, burning the candle at both ends, that cooking a meal has taken the back seat. It's the easiest thing to drop. I've got to get kids to practice. I've got a meeting. I've got to get to work. I need my sleep. Um, take care of aging parents. Whatever it might be, fast food is what we fall back on. That's the thing that drops the first. So we need to get back to cooking at home. We need to eat these lean meats, nuts and seeds that have all those healthy fats and healthy oils, more fiber from these dark rich fruits and vegetables, beans and lentils. And you know, if you're overwhelmed by making some of these changes, even if you work on maybe trying to just incorporate a few more vegetables in your diet first and then work on fruits, maybe work on one meal at a time. There are a lot of meal planning websites available, even home delivery meal services that you can give you all the ingredients to cook a fresh meal at home. It's just taking advantage of it. I will tell you here at this point, because it's a good point to tell you, um, at Health Education we offer a lot of different classes, uh, even individual appointments with uh, health educators or dietitians to help you coach you along to making better choices and a healthier lifestyle. I'll talk a little bit more about that near the end. Achieving a healthy body weight. This is one way you can also decrease your cancer risk as being overweight increases your risk of certain cancers because when you're overweight it causes what's called insulin resistance. Some people might know it more as prediabetes but it causes inflammation in your body and I keep saying that you know inflammation sets the stage for more disease including cancer. So if a woman's waist is above 35 inches or a man's is above 40 inches, that is a risk. At, if you go to our website, www.beavermedicalgroup.com, there's a health education tab. And we do offer a lot of, like I said, classes. One's called the Total Wellness class. And that'll give you tips on healthy eating, stress management, exercise. We also have uh, stress management classes. Um, meditation, deep breathing, Tai Chi. So we're here to help you in any way we can. 
to take back your health and put in a lot of prevention. Lastly, I'm going to talk a little bit about reducing your environmental toxic load. So these are things in our environment like BPA plastics were pretty uh, in the news years ago. You really need to store food and water in glass and never heat plastic in the microwave. I realize frozen foods come in those little plastic trays, vegetables come in those steamer bags, but at those high temperatures the plastic can break down and it can be a carcinogenic because it messes with our hormones. So I would encourage you to transfer those to a glass dish, maybe put a paper towel on top, but uh, do not cook in the plastic. Clean your home using household cleaners that don't contain harmful chemicals. Baking soda is a good all-around cleaner, but you can search, do a Google search for green cleaning products. There's a lot of things you can make naturally at home. And I know at Target I've seen, you know, Method cleaners, Mrs. Myers cleaners, uh, environmentally friendly cleaners are going to be more friendly to your body as well. Beauty detox, you know, hair dye, uh, cosmetics, all those things seep into our skin and expose us to certain chemicals, increasing our risks. Skin Deep is a specific website that you can go to to find healthy cleaning products as well as safer options for uh, cosmetics and hygiene products. And then go organic whenever possible to reduce your pesticide exposure. I know our budgets are always an issue, um, but if you buy things in season, locally grown, more and more organics are being offered at the grocery store. When you can, I would encourage you to do that. So in conclusion, the three main points I would really like you to do is trying to get more fruits and vegetables. And number two is eat more whole foods, less processed foods. Check out those ingredient listings on your, on your packages. You'll be shocked. There should not be that many ingredients in instant oatmeal. <laughs> uh, I looked at that once and was just amazed. Don't smoke and avoid alcohol. So thank you for joining me today. This is my email. If you have any questions, you can give me a call. I hope this, pre uh, give me an email, not a call. I hope this presentation encouraged you to take steps towards a healthier lifestyle. Have a great day. Thank you, Janet, for that wonderful presentation. And thank you everyone for joining us today. If you have any questions, please feel free to email them directly to the email here shown. Um, a copy of today's presentation is available for you to print in the handout section of the task pane. Once you close out of this webinar, you will be prompted to take a short survey to let us know what you thought of today's presentation. Also in the handout section of the task pane, we have a flyer for the upcoming October webinars. If you're interested, you can go ahead and print that out as well. Again, have a happy and healthy day and thank you for joining us.